Thank you for joining us. Of course. There's Good a to see lot you. going on. I don't know when <laughs> yeah. we look at the policies surrounding climate change, whether it's slipped down because of conflicts in the Middle East, because of conflicts in Ukraine, and what you're expecting here in Davos. Well, I think there's going to be a lot of fruitful discussion about uh, climate here. I hope we can make some further progress. So you know the, uh, the, the conference in Dubai, where you did such great coverage, ended with a, uh, an agreement to phase out uh, fossil fuels. Some of those who signed up to that pledge have, are now trying to claim it was optional and trying to walk it back a little bit. But it's an important uh, commitment that must be kept. Um, as for your question, will it uh, fall down the agenda? I don't think so. Be Mother Nature has other uh, intentions. Unfortunately, the climate-related extreme weather events are underway right now, today, every day, every day. Uh, and we're continuing to add uh, a huge additional amount of heat-trapping pollution to the sky every single day. The good news is that once we get to true net zero and stop adding, the temperatures will stop going up almost immediately with a lag of as little as three years. And if we stay at true net zero, half of the human caused uh, greenhouse gas pollution will fall out of the atmosphere in as little as 25 to 30 years. But if. getting there is it, it, <laughs> right. getting there is very right. tough. It's a, it's a big if. But it's not a it's not an impossible if because yeah. we now have a better technologies that are cheaper in almost the entire world without pollution. Mm -hmm. Decades ago, one of the Saudi energy ministers uh, famously said to his king, we better remember that the Stone Age didn't end because of a shortage of stones. It ended because something better came along. Well, something better has come along to replace fossil fuels. But the power of the fossil fuel industry and the petro states that depend on that revenue um, it has been a major obstacle blocking progress. Mm -hmm. uh, little by little, that's beginning to give way. And I want to thank uh, my friend John Kerry for his terrific was, service to, to, ask you. to the U.S. And I think people around the world owe him yeah. a debt of gratitude for uh, his tireless work. What does John Kerry stepping down mean for efforts on the climate change? Well, he'll be hard to replace because he brought um, the stature to, to uh, have the mm -hmm. kinds of meetings that a climate envoy needs to, needs to have. And of course, he shouldn't be judged just by the final result in uh, Dubai. He's been there for several yeah. cops. And, you know, in the Summer Olympics, when they judge the diving competition, the degree of difficulty has a, a great deal to do with the final score. And he undertook a tremendously yeah. difficult task and really did a terrific job, in my opinion. Vice President, you've called for the way that COP works to change. Yeah, yeah. The w no, will it? Are people listening? I think they are. Uh, it would be it, it's difficult to change it. But I think the time has come because uh, for, for one thing, look, this is the second year in a row. We're going to have a petro state uh, hosting the cop with an oil and gas veteran as the president of the cop. Come on. I mean, really? Uh, and the percentage of revenue coming from oil and gas in Azerbaijan, the host of this year's cop, is even larger than what it was in the United Arab Emirates. And uh, it's not that they're bad people or have bad intentions. They just have a, a, a structural conflict of interest. Also, there is another problem. When the UN selects different regions, they rotate the, through yeah. regions of yeah. the world, as you yeah. know. And any nation within that region has a veto power over where the COP can be held. So Russia, in this instance, said, no, you can't have it uh, in any uh, uh, country that has sane policies, <laughs> my editorial ad there, any NATO country, et cetera. Uh, and so it ended up in one of the ancient homes of the petroleum uh, industry again. Uh, I personally believe that the Secretary General should have uh, joint authority with mm -hmm. the host nation to name the president of the COP. Secretary General Guterres does not want that authority, and I understand yeah. that. But I think the time has come to reform this process. The world is getting uh, understandably impatient and frustrated that these conferences are rigged. They're yeah. rigged. The deck is yeah. stacked in favor of the fossil fuel industry. But we did have agreements. So again, how do you yeah, match such the as two? They are. You have, such such right. as they are. There's so, so many loopholes and uh, and, and so, so many uh, yeah. tricky phrases. Um, and it took 28 cobs, 28 right. years of cobs before we even could use right. the phrase fossil fuels. The, the climate crisis is a fossil fuel yeah. crisis. That's what it is. And, what? and yet it's taken us this long to overcome 
their resistance and even naming the problem. What, what happens to climate change pledges from the U.S. if uh, President Trump become, has a second term? Well, first of all, let me say that uh, I think that in spite of the loopholes I mentioned in this agreement and in spite of the frustration many of the climate advocates, uh, such as I, have felt uh, about it, nevertheless, we see the, the direction of travel, as they use that phrase, for both business and government shifting yeah. inexorably toward low-carbon, uh, renewable energy, uh, and, and toward net zero. We see the same thing here at, at uh, the World Economic Forum. Uh, this place is sometimes criticized. It's unique in bringing all kinds of uh, people together in a way that doesn't happen uh, anywhere else. Uh, so, and your question was... If President Trump gets oh, into the he, White uh, House, what does well, that mean? Well, first of all, I, hope, I of course, right? hope that doesn't happen. There are yeah. many of my fellow Americans who, 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 who are for him. You know, look at the last time when he became president, we continued the march toward renewable energy. On the business uh, side. On the business side, and, and state governments uh, continued to pursue uh, carbon reduction. Uh, here in Davos, a Republican red state governor from Georgia is leading off uh, talking about the virtues of electric yeah. vehicles. We are seeing with the legislation that President Biden got passed, the Inflation Reduction Act, as it's called, the biggest climate right. legislation any nation's ever passed in history. We're seeing a change in the political realities on the ground in the U.S. with the, with the creation of tens of thousands of new jobs in electric vehicles, batteries, wind, solar, efficiency, green hydrogen. And, and now uh, some of these red states in particular, yeah. they're now seeing the benefits of right. all these new uh, jobs being yeah. created. It's really changing so uh, the reality. Think, do you think Donald Trump won't try and touch that? I wouldn't even begin to predict what goes on in, uh, in his calculations. Um, and of course, uh, tonight we will see yeah. the results of the first contest, which all the pundits tell us he's yeah. likely to win. But in New Hampshire, it could yeah. be a different story. I'm not a political uh, pundit myself, so well, I, mean, I won't opine on that. But <laughs> I don't think, uh, e even were he to be elected, and I know that kind of looms over yep. many people's calculations uh, these days, even if he were to win, I think we would see a continuation okay. of this progress toward zero carbon.